back when no, the Red Sox won in 2000. Countries do that. Oh wait, this is Soviet Union and North Korea, isn't it? Something like okay, that. They mind. have the funny, the marches, and yeah. you know they. Ah, they all. Yeah. They use their heads. Yeah. And the like leader that. watches it, uh, looks at them. So the president, the president. This is very autocratic, and who would ever guess this president would be so in prone to autocratic light of all tendencies? This, we want a, we want a military parade. Can you imagine if it happens though? Just, I mean, just as you play it out, do the images are going to be kind of. Peronist, but yeah. pro Peronista, but there, there will be counter protests, right? This will actually be a thing. This is. I mean, I it will not be. It will not. It will not go off without incident, right? There will be a. We, will, ju we just don't be a do. Giant. We just don't do military. Yes, military parades parades in this country. It's not part of our grand American tradition. Well, President Trump has asked his top military commanders no. to plan no, a military you have to parade tell him in no. Washington. You have to tell a him Pentagon no. A Pentagon spokesman confirms that the department is quote looking at possible dates. To tell him no. Adding that November 11th is Veterans Day, and that's a possibility. I have a great idea. Yeah. Why don't we get, and I'm dead serious, why don't we get Vietnam vets, some Korean vets, uh, get vets from the wars uh, to march, uh, those that have already been to war, uh, perhaps those who are still carrying this, uh, the scars of those wars. Let them march. And 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 on Veterans Day, and we can applaud them. That's something that would be great. That's Don't they, exactly I, I think what that happens. I think that happens all over the United States yeah, no, now. No, but I'm saying, why doesn't the yes. president organize that? that right. Have the Pentagon that he, organize that, and have the largest veterans parade in American history, where veterans can come together from all of these wars and talk through the challenges they still are facing in peacetime. 30, 40 years I think later. it's more about power and being saluted. Right. It's not about actually respecting the sacrifices or, or, of people who you know, love our country so much oh, that, that they would lay their lives on the line. There is a, a lot has happened over the past uh, 14 months since Donald Trump was sworn in as president. This is the saddest this <clears> thing is really to my mind. I mean, we have been at war for 17 years. We have had nearly two decades of sacrifice and sorrow right. borne by less than 1% of the American public. Right. The American military is the strongest, the proudest, the best in the world. The American military and the American people do not need a parade. We need peace. Why doesn't the president direct um, the Pentagon to double down with the VA, John, yeah. to make sure that our men and women who are still suffering in Afghanistan, who are suffering from the scars of Afghanistan, uh, and from Iraq, yeah. and from Vietnam, yeah. why doesn't he put his focus on us actually as a country taking care of the men and women who have already given their all. You've got a, you've got a PTSD crisis from the veterans who served here. We've got a suicide, the extraordinary today. plague of suicides among veterans who served, as Mike said. How about you take the millions, and it will be millions of dollars that's going to go into planning this alleged parade. Take that money, earmark it, and put it into PTSD uh, counseling and services. Be, be, yes. Use well, that money to try to actually help the people who have already made these extraordinary many, sacrifices for the country. How many suicides per day? Yes, it's I a know, horrifying a, number. A, a year or two ago, we were well over 20 suicides a day, day from our men and women in uniform. Let's bring in NBC News Pentagon correspondent Hans Nichols. What more can you tell us, Hans, about what's behind this request? Are we misunderstanding it? No, you have it pretty clearly. The president uh, gave a directive to the Pentagon. If there's one thing we know about the Pentagon, is that they're a planning organization. And number two, they go ahead and when they get what they perceive to be directives or orders, we can hash out the exact language. If the president of the United States, their commander in chief, tells them to do something, they're going to do something. I got to tell you guys, the most surprising aspect of this story to me was the speed with which the Pentagon confirmed the Washington Post scoop. It was about 12 hours ago this story broke in the Post. Uh, There's a whole bunch of reporters who are running around trying to match it. Normally, it's very difficult to figure out what was said inside the tank. And that's where this order was given about two weeks ago, according to the, Pan uh, according to the Post. Pentagon just said, yeah, sure, we're looking at dates. It's out there. It's a request, and we're going to figure out how to do it. So they're planning organization, and they follow orders, and that has implications across a whole lot 
of policy arenas. Well, Hans, Sky uh, I, I would guess, I, maybe I'm wrong, but Secretary Mattis, a man who was in Iraq from the very beginning, who warned American yeah. leaders not to go to Iraq, uh, who warned American leaders uh, against Bremer's debathification, who was there in Fallujah when hell rained down in Fallujah, I would guess that General Mattis would probably be the first person concerned about this. Any, any chance that we would see pushback from the secretary? I think it's unlikely. I think when Secretary Mattis, a former Marine Corps general, came, came up through, spent almost 40 years in the Marine Corps, when he gets orders, he follows them. Now, the fundamentals of the relationship between Mattis and Trump is that Mattis challenges Trump, right? That, those were the rules written when they had their first interview. Mattis challenged him on three things, on Russia, on, on torture, one other issue as well, NATO, I think, the importance of NATO. So Mattis has shown a willingness to challenge the president and to disagree with him. It just seems like this is an order that was given from the president. President is clearly likes military parades. He talked about this back in 2011. Right. But, but do you think Hans it may have been leaked because they want to get this genuinely bad idea out immediately? Yes. So these kind of conversations are had. You say things like this never leak. Well, they got it out fast. Do you think it was to kill it? My reading of, of the Pentagon on this is that they don't think it's a bad idea. And I, it doesn't seem like the White House thinks like it's a bad idea. They think this is celebrating the troops, celebrating uh, the, America's military might. You remember how impressed President Trump was when he saw that Bastille Day extravaganza oh, when he was Lord. in France. It was two hours. He's talked about this mess. It's not entirely unprecedented. In 1991, maybe, maybe there's a Gulf War parade. Maybe he should move to France if he yeah. likes what they do in France better than here. Yeah, you know, I don't know how if he'd order one or two baguettes, right? That's the trick when you're living in France. Just always say deux baguettes because well, you can't ever remember when it's un or un. You would, you would eat them with a fork and knife and um, white gloves. You know, uh, un. But have you seen how he eats pizza? The president eats pizza? Oh, I've seen it. God, no. NBC's Hans Nichols. Hey, Hans, as always. I've seen how Hans Michael eats pizza, too, and it's Duffy. not pretty. Um, you know, he, not even, he doesn't use straight, straight to the mouth. Nichols is, he's a thug. So, yeah, so. Um, a my, government my, Michael, shutdown Michael and a Duffy. military parade. Yeah, Michael it Duffy. doesn't seem like a good mix. How, yeah, how like, fascinating I, of all the people that you uh, talk about in the President's Club, uh, Ike and his mm -hmm. open uh, suspicions about the military that he served in all of his life. Of course, the famous warning at the end of the presidency about the military industrial complex. This seems like of all the presidents you have studied, the one that knew of the horrors of war the most, Dwight Eisenhower would think this was an absolutely horrific, un-American idea. Yeah, I think he'd say it was over the top and ill-timed. Uh, but asking around the Pentagon yesterday, I can tell you that uh, it, it is quickly confirmed. Hans is right. Um, and I'm beginning to think it might happen. Um, I put more stock, Joe, in your theory that the, the Pentagon isn't, isn't as for it as they might seem. I think they dragged their feet on this since we first heard him ask <clears throat> about it almost uh, six months ago. Um, yeah. And they finally obviously said, okay, we're looking at dates. Oh. Um, oh that doesn't mean that they're like, you know, or putting tanks on, on rail cars yet and, and yeah. sending them east. There are no tanks, by the way, anywhere near the city. It might turn out to be something just like with troops. But I think you can no longer imagine that this isn't a possibility. Um, a number of our presidents have been trained uh, in the military. Carter went to Annapolis, Ike, of course. Um, uh, but President Trump, let's not forget, went to military school. He uh, has a love of the uniform. He's surrounded himself with generals. He talks about his generals right. as if they're his. Um, he obviously likes, as Mika said, being saluted because he imagines that uh, generals will do exactly as he says. In fact, the military is much more clever than that. Um, and they have their own way of slow walking things. And this is, I think they've tried to slow walk this. But now they're past the point of being able to take that tactic. I think there is the reason it was so easy to confirm is I think they'd like to start a conversation about whether this is a good idea. Yeah. Um, and they've done that. <clears throat> but I, they are not passive players here in this conversation no. at all. Well, clearly the president was impressed and admired the Bastille Day Parade in France. Mm. It mm. took two hours in length and it was over and it was impressive. How about if the President of the United States takes two hours and walks through Arlington National Cemetery and he would recognize the responsibilities of what it means to be Commander-in-Chief, what it means to send young people to war? 
I'm not being, I, I, this really is not meant as, as being personal, but if he would just visit, um, if he would just visit the thousands of American soldiers who died in the jungles of Vietnam while he got five deferments, uh, if, even if he would lay a wreath at the, um, at, in the Arlington, it, 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 the graves of, I think, 20 to 25 uh, American soldiers who died the week that he was graduating from college. Um, I, 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 think, I think Americans actually would be far more moved by that than a showy parade that is un-American, that is the sort of thing that autocrats usually do, and that we just don't have a tradition of doing in this country. Fifty years ago this week, the Marines, yeah. were, in, the Marines were in Hue. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we are, you can go back 50 years, and Tet was 50 years ago last week. And, and yeah, and now, uh, and he was, you know, in college. Five deferments. I don't think he five, five, de five deferments. And, five. you know, even Ike, Ike was even suspicious of generals that wore all the medals. The, what did he call it? Fruit salad? Yeah. He had one. And one didn't need to show anything else. He was he was understated. The man <laughs> that helped save Europe and Western civilization, who drove the Nazis back across Europe. I just uh, it, the, Donald Trump. I know he doesn't read. And uh, his own chief of staff said that the ten-page Democratic memo was too long for him to read. Uh, I guess he circled back and said he'll get him to read it. That somebody should give him an oral history of Dwight Eisenhower. And before he starts talking about military parades. It's got to be a history Senator. channel thing you could watch. Still ahead on Morning The Gorilla Joe. Channel. We're actually not <laughs> I said history channel. Kidding. That Gorilla Channel thing may have been the greatest fake <laughs> meme in Internet history. <laughs> Trump wanted to see the Gorilla. I believed it for like about... Half a minute. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm more than that. Channel. I was like, I, I, who knew there was a gorilla I was channel? Like, where is this gorilla <laughs> channel? I was about to call Direct TV. Yeah, where's that on my dial? I, I don't check have the gorilla. <laughs> God, what the punch for just the gorillas are fighting. Yeah. I tell you, so this is some reality TV it's, show. Uh... You know, if we survive it, um, and there, it'll be funny. In there is still a constitutional republic at the end of all of this. We may look back at it one day and cry. Still ahead on Morning Joe, the White House, that's a real boost in the morning. The White House Chief of Staff launches a broadside at Dreamers, calling some of them too lazy to sign up for the government program. We're going to.